perfect. So what about some of your um, routines, some actionable advice and tips and ideas that some of our listeners and viewers can take to the classroom? Okay. Um, so first of all, I think the most important thing in any classroom, infantil, primary, or high, like secondary, is establishing a routine, like immediately walking into the door. Mm, my kids, like, uh, I don't know if it's my like Latino culture or even the Spanish culture or just also the American culture. Like, mm, you must say hi to someone. You must greet people. So in my classroom, whether it's like walking in the door, we fist pump and we say, I say, what color do you want to hang your your backpack on or we have another way we say good morning with a elbow with a dance with a hug one of those things or I just walk in the class or, or dance into the classroom like hey uh oh just we're here um and then I is this, sorry is this yeah. as the students are shuffling in like it the depends routine start then or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, the routines the routines start when you pick up your kids routines start if you if you pick up your kids and go to the classroom that's already a routine um if you your kids are already in the classroom and you come in after another teacher the way you come in and how they transition from the other teacher to you that's a routine and for me those are like the most important parts because it establishes mm, the atmosphere the environment and it's English time. Uh, I'm just going to give two quick examples. If I'm, if I'm picking up my kids, I pick up my kids and I'm like, you know, hello, it's time for English. And so they make a line and then we go to the classroom and they met, they don't walk into the classroom without me. I stand in the door and, and you know, you have to fist pump me and tell me what color you want to put your backpack on, or you have to pick a way to say good morning. You can change every day, change your colors every day, which is they're using the vocabulary that they have learned every step, every second of being with me. And then they go and they sit down and they put their backpacks where I've already established and you sit down. What that do you takes mean, like a week. You're, oh, or more, right? To establish, <laughs> yeah. to establish the routine. Um, but what do you mean you can change it every day? Because um, isn't the point of the routine to keep like the same kind of rhythm? Oh, I don't change every day. They change every day. They get to change their color every day. They can change the way that they say good morning, which is expanding their vocabulary. Absolutely. And Useful vocabulary. Practical Abs vocabulary. Absolutely. So it's not just I'm fine, thank you, and you. Oh, Lord. No, that's another thing. Uh, when I, for example, taking attendance, if I say, Jesse, you say here, and I say, how are you today? You could tell me I am hungry, I'm sad, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I'm happy. Again, comes after two to three months of listening to the hello, how are you song. And then slowly but surely they understand the different feelings and how to express ourselves. And then it becomes a routine. How do you feel today? Blah, blah, blah. And if they like, if they say, I'm hungry. And I say, oh, what are you hungry for? Broccoli? No. Are you hungry for a sandwich? No. Uh, what do you want? I want a cookie. Uh, you know, I want a cookie. Like that's a full sentence that a five-year-old is saying that doesn't speak English at home. So that's amazing. Yeah. Real language, like communication. It's even absolutely. more than just like learning English. It's learning communication. Yeah. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they understand when you say, what do you want? That sentence, the response begins with, I want. So. What are some of your typical routines that you do then? So choose a um, color. And what do you mean choose a color? Like, is it a color of a team or a color of a... Uh, um, they have like little pegs. Uh, not in this classroom, in my other classroom. They have pegs I don't, or hooks is what I call them. Pegs is in British. And oh. so <laughs> applying all languages. Um, they if they say what color they want, if they want a green peg today because the leader of the classroom said he wanted green, then everybody else is gonna want green. So they put their backpacks on the hook and they sit down. And most of the time I give my kids free range. They can sit wherever they want, just in these three tables. Or uh, right. you can sit wherever you want. Sometimes you have a bigger classroom. Right. right, and you can sit wherever you want just on these 
this mat that's on the center of the floor or only in this side of the classroom. But I like then, that. I like that. Giving them freedom within a set of boundaries. So it's, it's under control. That's actually a really good tip. Um, they're under control, this, but they have a boundary and, but exactly. they have their own freedom. This goes for big kids too, for like, if you have to give an exam, if you say, all right, guys, it's time for an exam, that's eh, nobody wants that. But if you say, um, we're going to do an exam and you can choose to use a pencil, a marker or a pen. They forget that they have to make an exam. To, whoa. <laughs> they forget that they have to take an exam and they get, they're like, Ooh, do I want to use a marker? Do I want to use a pencil? Do I want to use a pen? They forget and they just concentrate on their choice. So I think that that goes from three years old to your kids. To everybody. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> that's psychology. And uh, so that's great for parenting too. That's like teachers have such an unfair advantage when it comes to parenting because we know all these tricks. Like with uh, Sophia, when she doesn't want to eat, I'm like, well, okay, instead of saying, what do you want to eat? Or do you want to eat now? The answer is always, no. No, uh -huh. and, She never uh, wants to eat. No. And, uh, but if you're like, okay, um, do you want fish or do you want hot dogs or whatever? Um, I shouldn't tell people that I give her hot dogs, but it's normal. <laughs> I was raised on hot dogs and I turned out kind of fine. Um, kind of. Keyword. Yeah, kind of. Keyword. Uh, but it's like, do you want fish or do you want hot dogs? Mm, hot dogs and, and macaroni. Okay. It's my choice. I'm going to yeah. eat because it's exactly. my choice. That's yeah. awesome. And you're applying that to the classroom to a class. That's really good. Thank you. Hey, guys. I'm sitting here with my daughter, Sophia. She's recording this. And I just want to thank you for watching this video. If you like it and you want to see another video like it, then right next to me, you can click another video for a fun lesson idea or a teaching tip. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you get new videos every week. Keep teaching and keep learning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.